Okay, I think we can start with this afternoon's first panel, uh, which is entitled Travel, Travel and the Pleasures of the Map. Our first speakers are going to be our very special duet, <laughs> Xavier Amelot and Nathalie Jeck. So I'm going to introduce them, even though you, uh, Nathalie, needs no introduction. Um, so Xavier, Xavier is a geographer and a senior lecturer at the Université Bordeaux Montaigne, and he's a member of the uh, research team Passage. And he works on the relationships and the representations of uh, nature and uh, environmental action. He uh, works in a social geography perspective and a critical cartography. And he works on uh, mostly Madagascar, uh, the Reunion Island, Guyana, and he works on various projects, uh, research projects and uh, research and training uh, projects. He's published many articles and uh, works which we, you can uh, find out about uh, if you Google him. <laughs> <laughs> he has a very long uh, resume, so I'm, I'm going to spare you the details. <laughs> Um, Nathalie Jaek is a professor of 19th century British literature at the Université Bordeaux Montaigne and her PhD was on Sherlock Holmes stories and she works on Victorian literature of adventure. She wrote two books, Les Histoires de Sherlock Holmes, Une Affaire d'Identité and Charles Dickens, L'Écriture comme Pouvoir, L'Écriture comme Résistance, as well as numerous articles on the authors of the period and she was a, research, uh, a head of the research group Climat from 2011 to 2020, she's currently the Vice President for Research at the Université bordeaux Montaigne. Indeed, I am. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julie, for the presentation. So we are going to try um, something a bit new, which is, a, as, as she said, a duet. So it's going to be a kind of a geographical and literary investigation into the very famous map of Kidnapped, and that's the title. Uh, the map of uh, Treasure Island starts well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did work quite a lot on the map of Treasure Island, uh, of Kidnapped, but that's Treasure Island today. I promise I had one short glass of wine. That's it. Uh, so, uh, to start with, we can say that maps are definitely uh, associated with pleasure for Stevenson. Two, um, well, crucial quotes. I'm told there are people who do not care for maps, and I find it hard to believe in his description of Treasure Island and uh, also in, um, well, in a, in a letter to Charles Kribner, his editor, when he realized that the fog map, which had been in the first edition of uh, Kidnapped, had disappeared. He said to Charles Kribner, I have but one complaint. Where is the map of Kidnapped? I must have my map when you next issue it. A book of mine without a map? My God. So clearly, maps and pleasure are a match for Stevenson. Well, it's going to be a rather long introduction. My, my, my teacher was uh, Jean-Pierre Nogret. So <laughs> a, an introduction in a lot of quotations and a few propositions. So first, two competing quotes about the, 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 the actual genesis of the map. Lord Osborne claims that he was the one um, actually making it, and Stevenson claims the exact opposite, sort of. So I'm not going to read because if not, we're going to run out of time. But basically, that's Lloyd, that's Lloyd Osborne's quote in uh, his note to Treasure Island. You see in, in yellow, I happened to be tinting a map. I had drawn, I was finishing it when Stevenson is sort of relegated to elaborating the map and naming it and writing down the name. Stevenson, uh, well, for him, it, it was an, another story. So that's Stevenson's um, account in my first book, Treasure Island. I made the map of an island uh, and I sort of, I thought it was beautifully colored. Uh, I ticketed my performance. Okay, and so, uh, the, the, so that's the, the first point we want to make, uh, that there is a disagreement or a, a hesitation as to the authorship of the map. A map with two authors, so to speak. And uh, well, this is going to be a constant in the map, well, for the map in the book. The second element of these quotes, I return briefly to them, is that they both, it's in, in, in well, in, in yellow as well, they both insist on the a kind of ambivalent pleasure they find in the map. 
and you can you can see here the thrill or the climax or again the climax uh, that Lord Osbourne, Osbourne mentions and Stevenson as well mentions that it pleased him like sonnets and so our point is that uh, these two quotes uh, well uh, highlight for well for the French critic at least but perhaps for more, uh, they, these two quotes uh, ring a distinctly proto bartesian bell, we could say, because they, with the pleasure and climax, they conjure up uh, Bart's very, 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 very famous couple between pleasure and climax, le plaisir et la jouissance, uh, dans un in a very famous text that I'm going to quote later. So um, the sort of um, tension between pleasure and climax for both auth authors. Uh, Climax for Bart means, um, I'm going to quote later more at length, but basically it's characterized by a sense of loss, a sense of discomfort. And the sense of discomfort is reinforced by a third quote, the story of a presumably lost map. I'm not going, we can go back to that in the questions about the presumably lost. But, ba uh, well, Stevenson's story is that uh, he sent his manuscript along with the map and that the map got lo lost in the process. Presumably because uh, these stories of lost maps are totally, uh, well, were totally usual in the 18th, 17th, 19th century. Z Travelers would lose maps. So um, the point of the introduction is that we are, de as far as the genesis of the story is concerned, the genesis of the map, we are dealing with a little bit of a mess of a map to start with, with two authors a presumably lost map, the copy of a forged map by, by yet a third author, because as you can see here, Stevenson says that when the map was lost, he had to return and redo it from memory, basically, from rereading the book, with the help of his engineer, uh, well, uh, lighthouse engineer father, who, uh, well, lent him a hand because he had a knack of various writing and forged the map. Hence the title of our paper, Somehow It Never Was Treasure Island to Me. So a little bit of a mess of a map. And so um, the point we want to develop in the paper is that, um, well, uh, Stevenson comes up with what we could call a form of cartographic illusion. And the tribulations uh, of the material map that is at the origin of the novel and the co-presence of pleasure and climax that we noticed also characterize the map itself in the novel and its uses by Stevenson. And so what we are dealing with is what we call a divigating, multi-layered, misguiding map, which is a bit of an oxymoron. Uh, and this map becomes an adequate representation of Stevenson's text. So we are going to, well, not very originally, we are going to use Bart's quotation in a sort of two, um, two sections plan. We're going to, s to show how the map is first a source of pleasure and contentment. It corresponds to the cartographic and literary codes and so gratifies the reader through a sense of recognition, so this type of pleasure. But it's also a, a climactic, elusive map and the text kind of engages the reader into a form of map hunt as much as a treasure hum, uh, hunt. Sorry, It is hesitant and incoherent. It is a lacunary map. Many, many elements are missing, you'll see. And above all, and that was what interested us most, it cannot be stabilized. It turns up into quite a few different states. Uh, beyond the double word, I noticed that for the first time working on this paper, Stevenson calls the map a map until chapter 12, and then he calls it a chart, and the word map never returns. So we'll try to analyze that. I never noticed it before. Uh, and so the novel actually teams with several versions of the map. So to provide the reader with a constantly evolving palimpsest from several authors, Captain Smollett and Billy Bones. Um, well, I should have put perhaps first Captain Flint. But then Captain Smollett, Billy Bones, also the Doctor, also the Squire, also Jim, add up their different um, versions on it. So just so that you've got it on the sheet of quotations, but just to clarify the, um, well, the two parts. Uh, allez, je le lis en français, mais vous l'avez en anglais. Un texte de plaisir, celui qui contente, emplit, donne de l'euphorie. Celui qui vient de la culture ne rompt pas avec elle. Celui qui est lié à une pratique confortable de la lecture. Un texte de jouissance, celui qui met en état de perte, celui qui déconforte, fait vaciller les assises historiques, culturelles, 
psychologique du lecteur, la consistance de ses goûts, de ses valeurs, de ses souvenirs, met en crise son rapport au langage. So we'll start with the first part, the map as a map of pleasure, and that's for Xavier. Alors, la, le, en effet, la, la carte publiée en 1883, alors la carte qui n'est pas présente dans la, la publication dans, dans la revue Young Folks, euh, elle reprend euh, parfaitement les codes typiques de la cartographie euh, marine du XVIIe et du XVIIIe siècle. Donc elle, elle s'inscrit parfaitement dans l'imaginaire géographique familier à, à, au XVIIIe siècle, au, à la fin du XIXe siècle, pardon, qui reconnaît dans le dessin de ces, de ces cartes nautiques européennes qui sont utilisées depuis déjà plusieurs siècles, quelque chose de familier. Et donc le, Stevenson nous propose le dessin d'une carte plausible, comme celle que, que je vous que j'ai reprise en dessous, qui est une carte hein, du début du, du 18e siècle, alors qui, pour la petite histoire, c'est une carte de Herman Moll, un fameux cartographe britannique, enfin un émigré hollandais en, en, en Angleterre, qui est l'auteur de nombreuses cartes marines qui ont été comp compilées dans un atlas à l'époque, l'atlas euh, mineur, en, édité pour la première fois en 1719, mais qui est aussi le... Le micro ah, Pardon. Je me pousse. <rire> Merci. Euh, qui est aussi ce Herman Moll, l'auteur des cartes euh, publiées euh, par euh, Daniel Defoe dans euh, Robinson Crusoe ou par euh, Jonathan Swift dans Les Voyages de Gulliver. Donc on voit aussi hein, ce lien étroit entre cette cartographie euh, marine historique et... Euh, et, et la littérature. Deux autres cartes hein, pour, pour euh, vous montrer que les, les codes que l'on retrouve dans la carte de l'île au trésor alors, empruntent à la fois à la cartographie marine du XVIIe siècle, comme celle de gauche, des, des Orcades et des, et des Shetland, où on peut, hein, certains d'ailleurs ont cru reconnaître dans une de, de ces îles peut-être hein, quelque chose qui ressemble à la forme de l'île au trésor, mais surtout pour montrer donc, les, les codes du XVIIe siècle avec ces, ces, ces vaisseaux qui figurent autour, euh, autour des îles, la présence de blasons, la présence de cartouches, alors que les cartes euh, du début du XVIIIe siècle, qui sont censées être plutôt celles de l'époque, qui sont aussi assez proches hein, de, la, de la carte publiée, là on a une, une carte nautique aussi euh, tout à fait représentative de ce qui se faisait à l'époque où, où sont censées se, se dérouler euh, les aventures de l'île au trésor. On retrouve donc parmi les, les éléments hein, qui, qui, qui rassurent et qui nous donnent cette, cette carte de plaisir, on retrouve ce fameux cartouche hein, qui est encadré dans la carte de Stevenson de façon un petit peu d'ailleurs anachronique par des, des figures légendaires qui, hein, de sirènes qui renvoient plutôt là, à des cartes encore plus anciennes hein, de, de la fin du XVIe siècle, comme celle d'Ortelius, ou la présence de navires. Alors, hein, les cartes, hein, avec ces ornements, notamment dans les, les espaces qui n'étaient pas connus, étaient plutôt des, des cartes utilisées euh, et, et figurées au XVIe siècle. On retrouve aussi l'image de la baleine. Alors c'est justement dans euh, My First Book, euh, euh, Stevenson parle d'une baleine dessinée sur la carte, mais elle ne l'est pas. Donc il y a aussi, il y a, il y a encore ce, ce, ce jeu. Alors on, si, si on détaille un petit peu, on voit tout un tas d'éléments hein, tout à fait significatifs hein, qui traduisent la technicité hein, de, de, la, de la carte de Stevenson. Donc euh, avec euh, le fait d'avoir été côtoyé euh, dans, depuis son plus jeune âge avec euh, sa, sa son père, ses oncles, tout, enfin, cette, cette dynastie d'ingénieurs constructeurs de phares, il était évidemment très familier des, des cartes marines de l'époque. On va retrouver donc tous ces codes. Alors, alors bien sûr, la rose des vents et puis les, les fameuses lignes de rhum hein, qui sont héritières de cartes, de cartes très anciennes, mais aussi surtout ce qui apparaît à cette époque, au XVIIe, avec les, les Hollandais et puis ensuite dans la, la, les marines françaises et britanniques, ces fameuses charts avec les, les sondes, les profondeurs d'eau qui permettent de, de naviguer euh, et qui détaillent le, la nature des côtes, s'il s'agit de côtes sableuses, de côtes rocheuses à falaises, s'il y a éventuellement des, des, des écueils qui sont figurés sur les cartes par des petites, des petites croix, et surtout ben, les endroits où on peut aborder avec la, la localisation, avec des petites ancres de marine, des, des endroits où les, où les mouillages sont possibles. 
Well, well, yes, it's, no, it's okay, so you can stay there because it's just three quotes to prove that indeed in, in Treasure Island they do use the map, uh, well, just as Xavier showed. For example, I'm reading the, just the first one. We brought up just where the anchor was in the chart. So the chart is indeed a very comforting, pleasurable tool to uh, do what they want. I'm not, I'm not reading the other two. Uh, there are plenty actually where they do use the map. No. On retrouve également donc des, des codes typiques là aussi des, des cartes de l'époque en matière pour la partie terrestre de la carte. Alors c'est aussi là un petit paradoxe, c'est parce que on, on avait à l'époque en général soit des cartes marines, ces fameuses nautical charts, soit des cartes terrestres, mais rarement des cartes qui mélangeaient les deux. Et là dans la carte de l'île au trésor, on a à la fois des indications de navigation, mais aussi des indications à l'intérieur de l'île. Alors des indications qui servent aussi à la navigation, le, le, ce que les, les amers, les, ces sailing marks qui, qui permettent de se repérer euh, pour euh, aborder l'île, mais aussi des éléments qui renseignaient, alors euh, utiles à l'époque aussi pour euh, pouvoir réparer les bateaux, le fait d'aborder des îles où, où, où la ressource en bois était, était présente, était importante, mais aussi des, des éléments de repère pour éventuellement éviter euh, les dangers comme... Euh, comme les, les marécages. Et puis on va retrouver aussi les, la codification des, euh, des cartes d'aventure. Yes, that's for me. Another and final element in uh, the map of pleasure is not only pleasure derived from, uh, as Xavier showed, uh, geographical elements, but also from literary elements. What I mean is that the map of Treasure Island is a highly cultural map. You remember Bart's quote. Um, a well pleasure is born from things that do not break with culture well typically this is a highly cultural highly intertextual map uh, the map in the chest is a typical prop of an adventure story for boys as Stevenson said the red crosses to indicate the position of the treasure as well uh, well please the reader content the reader uh, another one in uh, my first book treasure island Stevenson uh, will lists in a way that may seem a little bit paradoxical, all his borrowings from uh, the tradition of the literature of adventure, and I'm just quoting the final part, Billy Bones, his chest, the company in the parlor, the whole inner spirit, and a good deal of the material detail of my first chapter, all were there, all were there, all were the property of Washington Irving. So the, uh, indeed, a, a map that does not break with culture. There are, other, there are two other elements, the reference to Captain Kidd's anchorage. Captain Kidd was one of the most famous uh, real pirates to, to, have be, well, to have been known to have buried treasure. So there is what Barthes calls an effet de réel, a reality effect that gives the sense of pleasure. Uh, so that's the final point, this idea that uh, on top of all the uh, geographical elements, Um, the literary insertion of the card in a culture is very, very big. So we are reaching the second part, the, uh, well, the text as this climactic, elusive map, um, leading to climax, to jouissance, and loss much more than comfort. Uh, that's the, uh, the re, so that you have it in mind. Again, uh, a text that puts in a state of loss, which discomforts, which makes vacillate the historical, cultural, psychological basis of the reader, the consistency of his tastes, values, and memories, puts his relation of language in crisis. And that's, of course, a very important one, because uh, the, the map, which is meant to signify, just like writing, actually doesn't signify much in Treasure Island. Uh, well, uh, the first element is that there is, well, basically too much but not enough in this map in terms of information. Some basic elements of typical cartographic identification are missing, either beca because they have been erased or because they were never registered. So a little, well, some examples. One big erasure by Jim himself, the little narrator, Obviously, and most incorrectly, no latitude and no longitude. So you'll agree that, of course, this is a big missing element if you find an island. And James, in this kind of antiphrasis, says that he was keeping nothing back, sorry, nothing, nothing back but the bearings of the island. But it's quite a lot. One substitution, there is no geographical title to the map, but instead the story of a substitution because... Um, There should be, if we are to, if we are to be believe Stevenson, there should be Treasure Island uh, at the top right-hand corner of the map, written by Stevenson himself. Instead, we have, in the bottom right-hand corner, Flint's inscription, Treasure Island. 
So there again, bizarre, uh, well, a, a play between different authors. Lots of missing elements. I, I go a little bit quick because I'm not I'm not very sure how long it, it takes to be two uh, in one PowerPoint. Uh, so lots of missing elements, bizarre, unidentifiable elements. Some drawings are conventional, like Xav as Xavier showed um, the the little figure A's and, and the maps, but others are rather opaque ideograms. For example, the, this little one here is supposed to be the stockade, uh, but the reader needs the story to actually identify uh, the stockade for sure and he does it not earlier than chapter 12 and yet the sailors know what it is which is weird because they're, they're supposed never to have been in the island apart from Long John. The map is not up to date anymore either and again Long John knows better because though the map tells them that they cannot go one way Long John knows. Uh, another element is that it's uh, sorry an island from nowhere <laughs> or, or we don't know where oui dans dans, dans la présentation euh, euh, évidemment la, la localisation de, de la carte n'est pas n'est pas indiquée mais de nombreux indices euh, plaident pour une localisation dans la mer des Antilles dans les West Indies donc au nord de l'océan Atlantique alors il y a plusieurs indices qui permettent de de le, de le supposer. Euh, D'une part, bon, l'Hispaniola le, le, ne franchit jamais la zone du poteau noir, la zone équatoriale où il n'y a pas de vent, euh, ni ne franchit le cap de Bonne Espérance ou euh, le, le Cap Horn. Euh, vu la période, hein, si le voyage aurait dû prendre plusieurs mois, parce que ça se passe pendant l'hiver austral, et doubler le cap de Bonne Espérance ou le cap Horn aurait pris plusieurs mois, et euh, dans, dans des conditions de navigation qui auraient dû être extrêmement, euh, extrêmement difficiles, hein, euh, notamment dans le docteur Livesey indique hein, le, le départ euh, a lieu au début du mois de mars, et euh, la fin de l'histoire, hein, euh, ils reviennent avant que le, le navire de secours qui devait être envoyé au plus tard fin août, enfin s'il n'était pas rentré fin août, ne soit envoyé. Donc ça se passe sur un maximum de six mois, donc <coughs> impossible d'aller dans un autre océan que, que l'Atlantique. <coughs> Par ailleurs, toutes les références qui sont citées dans le texte euh, concernant notamment les, les activités de piraterie du capitaine de Flint font état de, de lieux qui se situent entre les côtes nord de l'Amérique du Sud, de l'actuel Venezuela, et euh, le, le sud des États-Unis, et notamment la, la ville de Savannah. Donc on a euh, un certain nombre d'éléments. Et enfin, hein, lorsqu'ils quittent l'île au trésor, ils rejoignent le port le plus proche qui est situé en Amérique espagnole. Donc il y a beaucoup d'indices euh, euh, qui plaident pour, pour une localisation dans le, le, les Antilles ou le golfe du Mexique. Euh, ce qui est intéressant également, c'est de voir qu'il y a tout un tas d'éléments qui, qui, qui nous perdent, qui, qui apparaissent euh, parfois un petit peu euh, contradictoires, notamment lorsqu'il s'agit de décrire la végétation, puisqu'il est fait référence parfois de la végétation tropicale, à des euh, muscadiers, euh, nutmeg trees, ou à des choses qui sont censées ressembler peut-être à de la mangrove, mais on a aussi d'autres descriptions dans l'île où la végétation dominante semble être des pins, euh, des euh, marécages aussi euh, peuplés de, de saules et de joncs qui sont plutôt typiques de, de végétation tempérée européenne ou parfois végétation méditerranéenne, il est fait référence aussi à des, à des chênes verts. Euh, donc beaucoup d'incertitudes quant à la localisation. Oh yes, that's the strange case of the sea lions. Because uh, they are here and they shouldn't, because they are typical of the cold seas. Well, like Xavier told me that. Uh, and so they are to be met on the northern Californian coast where Stevenson stayed. We stayed in Monterey and Point Lobos. So it's absolutely not okay to have sea lions in the West Indies. But if it is geographically incorrect, uh, again, uh, uh, it seems to be very literarily correct because it can be definitely read, I think, we think, as a tongue-in-cheek intertextual clue, as a tribute to James Fenimore Cooper, The Sea Lions, published in 1841, which was uh, one of the origins for Stevenson's uh, text, the story of the death of a sailor who left behind two old, dirty and ragged charts. And so the sea lions are not, uh, well, uh, they're not okay in, in, in the geographical uh, perimeter, but as far as the literature of adventure is concerned, they are totally fine here. Uh, well, the, the fact that it's an island from nowhere is reinforced by Jim's ellipsis. The journey is not narrated by Jim, which is, of course, another strategy to keep the place secret. 
I'm not going to relate the voyage in detail. Okay. Um, well, yes. Maybe we can sort of conclude. Uh, we can take three minutes to conclude. 23 minutes will be fine. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to be very quick. Um, you, m you know that I mentioned originally this proliferation of authors. Well, that's what I want to demonstrate here. There, there are several um, layers of maps. Uh, the first one, flint or not flint. Uh, the fact that... Oh, no, sorry. I'm sorry, I got lost. That's not what I wanted to say. Um, well, you are going to believe me, I'm sure. There are lots of uh, different additions. Flints, Billy Bones, who, well, you, you've got the map, so you can see, actually. Uh, Jim Hawkins' map, which is a facsimile, which he, well, adds again. Well, I'm sorry, I got lost. Basically, there are two things. There is the printed map with several versions, and there is the narrated map, the map as it's used in the story. And the map is used in the story in many, many different ways and comes up in many, many different versions. Um, and maybe I want to insist on the final version, the one, the final real map as it returns, because many people have added and taken off things, but towards the end, the doctor actually gives Jim the full map, and we wonder why, and actually, uh, Long John wonders why, why, why is he giving me the thing? And that's very interesting, of course, because it's the same, and yet a very different map. Because, uh, why? Because it is obsolete, because Ben Gunn has actually found the treasure, displaced the treasure, and so the map is the same, but its function is very, very different. And so we reach uh, Bart's crisis of signification, that, that we dealt with at the beginning. The map is a discourse in the past, as always, and does not correspond to, uh, well, to the, the situation. And so I want to final, final minute, uh, because I thought it was, uh, well, great that after working on Treasure Island for 30 years, I found that uh, this sort of substitution of the chart for the map which makes me, well, we were dealing this morning with how, mu well, how Stevenson was self-conscious about his own writing. Well, that's very, very clear. Until the map is reliable, it's a map. When it is not reliable anymore, it becomes the chart. E very explicitly, as always with Stevenson, uh, this was not the map, this is the spot. So uh, we've got this hesitation. And so, uh, well, there are three, maybe three elements that we can remember. This very self-conscious substitution, I, I, as I mentioned, a clue to the fact that a map is no objective rendering of reality. There are always gaps, omissions, intentions in the act of mapping and writing. Second point, Ben Gunn is the one who got the treasure without the map, which is, of course, uh, interesting. So a territory, and that's, of course, one of the uh, instructions of social geography, a territory cannot be mastered through the tool of the map. It needs to be practiced and lived in. And he who can claim mastery of the land is the one truly belonging to the land. And it's the exact same thing in Kidnapped with Alan and David, David reclaiming territory, though the map belongs to the Redcoats. And finally, the tribulations of the map are a good indication that writing, well, I'm, I'm quoting, I could not f couldn't finish it with quoting Deleuze, uh, the tribulations of the map are a good indication that writing has got nothing to do with signifying, but with walking through, mapping, even territories to come. And that's exactly what the, the case of Treasure Island is. It's always, indeed, a territory to come. You never come to, well, a coincidence between the place and the map. Thank you very much. Thank you.